Well, hello guys and gals. Uh, I've been meaning to do this video for a while. I'm getting a lot of questions from people about the TSP fall workshop for 2022. You might be watching this video sometime in the future because honestly, this video will probably be used over and over again for as long as there is a TSP and TSP workshops. So if you don't know what any of this is about, there's a link in the video notes where you can go see the announcement about the workshop and the schedule and everything else. Go look at that and then come back and read this. If you are a veteran, meaning you have been two TSP workshops before, most of what you hear is going to be old hat news, but it may still be valuable. And if you have friends who are trying to get in, uh, assuming you're a good friend and you want them to, you may want to share this video with them. So here we go. First of all, how do I sign up for the TSP workshop is the number one question I've been getting. Uh, that is in the article that is linked below. But basically, you need to get on either the TSP Telegram channel or the TSP Telegram group for the main uh, audience. And so the way this is going to work is at 9.30 Central Standard Time this coming Saturday, which I believe is the 24th, uh, I will go in there at exactly that time, and I will hit Control-C, Control-V, and I will drop that link to sign up into that Telegram group. And then, like the old movie Rat Race, it's a race, it's a race. You, it's, it's jump ball. And it's the only way I can be fair. I want you guys to understand that are listening to this, that might be new to this. 60 to 70% of the people at my workshops are repeat students. They've been before. Some of them have been, you know, every year, except maybe a year they didn't get in for eight consecutive years or more. So we do things right. There's a lot of competition to get in. And over the last two years, I allowed the headcount to rise up because I just feel bad telling people no to 65 students. And we have paired it back down to 50. We've slightly raised the price. I've had the same price locked in for what, nine years, almost 10. It'll be 10 years uh, going into this year. This will be our 10th year of doing workshops. And obviously prices on things like brisket and high-end sausages and all the other stuff that we serve have gone, grass-fed beef, et cetera, have gone up. Uh, so my costs have gone up. So I've had to, to pass along at least a portion of those costs to my students. So this year, the workshop is going to be $600. Deposit on the day you sign up is $200 and $400 due when you come. Um, I really want to give you some tips for signing up uh, and, and cover some things that are a little bit different this year. I really hate it when somebody says, I got in, but my wife didn't. I got in, but my dad didn't, and people want to come together. So I am allowing, and I know this will make the sellout a little more complicated for people. I am allowing people to buy two tickets. Only if the other person is a direct family relative, this would be a father, son, mother, daughter, mother, son, wife, and husband arrangement. Okay. Um, and if you're not legal, I'm not going to ask for your marriage license or anything, but couples and parents and children, I will allow that. And that means that you can put quantity two in when you're ordering. If somebody puts in a quantity three, I'm refunding all of their tickets. I'm not even talking to them, and you are you're you're not coming. So I I, I can't set in pay for some reason PayPal won't let me say only allow quantity two, right? So somebody could go in there and buy it all. I'm just saying your money back, and and we're gonna do this kind of the the jump ball democratic way that we do things, right? So that's how it's gonna work. When you go to sign up. You will come to this page right here. This will be the page that you're on. And the main thing I wanted to do was give people a heads up to the fields that are there so that you can have already made your decision about what you're going to put in. And that will let you get through the form a little bit faster, assuming you watch this video. So name, first and last. Email, make sure it's accurate. Next, your phone number. Please give us your cell phone number. Because assuming you get a ticket, and you come here, we have this roster. We don't share it with anybody. I don't put you in any kind of database or anything. But should there be some sort of emergency involving you and we can't find you, we can get in touch with you immediately. Um, or if there's some other thing that's happened, somebody leaves to go get something and we haven't seen them or we're wanting to check. Like this is really for your benefit. Are you camping or staying off site? Do your best with this. We don't hold you to it. But if you plan to camp, you click camping, staying off site. You click stay off site. Do you want group hotel rate information? Unless you're pretty sure you're going to stay in a hotel, just say no. That way we don't overpromise to the hotel. And as long as we have enough people that have interest, we do get a group rate. There is a, several hotels about 15 minutes from here. And basically Dorothy shops all of them and whoever gives us the best deal, that's who we go with. Um, 
more and more people are pairing up and getting Airbnbs instead, saving some money that way and having better accommodations. I'll get to that in a bit. And then this is actually really important, this last one. Here, which best describes you? Help us plan parking. I have a car and will need to park on site. I am either riding with someone or getting an Uber, et cetera. So if you are a couple coming together, one person would say they are, one person would say that they're not. Um, if you were one was driving, because it's two people, one car. This helps me plan parking. This is really, really helpful to me. Uh, next up, I wanted to show you the screen that you would um, you're going to end up on. This will be there'll be one screen in between this. After you hit that form, you'll go to it'll say click here to make your payment. When you fill that form out. You have not reserved your spot because we have people every year that fill out that form and never complete payment. They change their mind, whatever it is. They didn't understand what they were doing. I don't know. But you'll end up on this page to make payment. And you can, again, set a quantity two right here. Don't set a three or higher. If you do, again, I will refund your money. And if you're doing a two, father, son, mother, daughter, mother, son, you know, child, parent, Children must be 16 or over. If there's some sort of exception you're looking for, it's a possibility. You would have to email me on the side before it, and I would have to pre-approve any child under 16. You need to understand, parents, this is not, this is not um, a summer camp environment. This is adults. It stays. We stay up late. There's a lot of drinking after the presentations and things like that. There's a lot of adult language. And I have a lot of animals, and I don't have time to be policing up the activities of children in this event. This is a smaller event. This is not a festival. This is a this is a, a unique event that we have built and developed over the years. So just assume no kids, no kids. Fill that out. Make your payment. When you go to do this, when you 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 take care of making payments, you're either going to come to a page that says you have paid. We, you, he's accepted, and, and your, your payment's been made. If that happens, you're in. I will get two emails. I will pair them up, your form and your payment, and I may contact you and say, hey, I have a question, but you're in. If you hit that and it says it's sold out, you didn't get in. I have get people every year, they're mad because they got the form filled out, but by the time they made payment, the payment was declined because the inventory sold out. I'm selling 50 seats. There's an inventory account in PayPal. When it hits 50, PayPal will just give you a, a message that says, I'm sorry, we're sold out. At that point, you can email me to be put on a standby list, but that will only help you if somebody cancels within the first 14 days. And we'll get to why that's the case in a bit. It would be really advantageous for you at that time to get on the Telegram list that you are already on and, 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 and let people know, hey, if you decide you need to sell, I, I'm buying. Because here's what my refund policy is. Here's my refund policy. If you have to cancel in the first 14 days after you make your deposit, I just give you your money back and I deal with it. After that, I ask you to try to sell your own ticket. Because what happens inevitably is people wait till it's like four days before the workshop and tell me they can't come. I've already locked it in. This thing sells out, that type of thing. I I, I can't deal with that. My, my whole message through this whole thing is I have one job as the host of this event. From the time you come in my gate to the time you leave, you have a fantastic experience. What happens on the other side of my gates, I don't, I don't touch, I don't get involved with. I have always said the deposit is non-refundable, and I've always given refunds uh, anyway, uh, over promise and under, you know, under promise and over deliver. I finally said it at the 14 day. I figured that if like somebody like I really want to go, and then like something can't be worked out, and you got your ticket that. If I had 14 days from the sale date, then I would be able to sell your ticket, no problem. After that, it gets a little bit more complicated. I don't want to have to do it. I think that's fair. I think that's reasonable. Last year, about, about four people ended up having to cancel, and all four of them were able to sell their ticket. In fact, one had was a couple, and they sold both their tickets. They had no problem. How you do that, that's up to you. Um, I appreciate an email after the fact. You know, I'm Bill. I bought Tom's ticket. That type of thing. Uh, so I just changed the name on, on the receipt. If you're a couple of any form, you go through, you fill out one form for one person, you complete payment. Once you complete payment, go back and fill the form out for the other party. That will help me a lot if you do that. Um, 
And then it would be nice of you to send me an email and say, this person goes with this person and here's how they're related. Okay. That will help me figure it out because it's a big mess on cell day to get all these things paired up. This is the way I do things. It would be much easier if I did this in a very static way, like using WooCommerce or some shit and issuing actual things. It's unnecessary and it, it would make it more difficult for me to be fair in this process. That's why I do it kind of a little tiny bit of a clunky way. I've never allowed people to buy two tickets before. So filling out that form would help me. Uh, next up, this is one that I have to deal with every year. You're going to get a document after you, you pay for your deposit. They'll get, you'll get an email. It'll say, go here to get your event packet. Please go get it. Please read it. It's eight pages long, but it's a quick read. The first page and a half is just the schedule. Right. There's some important stuff on there, but in giant red, all cab letters, it says no RVs and no trailers on my property at all, period. Actually, exclamation point. And every year there's somebody that tries to bring a trailer or an RV on my property and gets very upset with me when I say no. My property is brittle. It cannot handle your big trailer being turned around. And when we have 50 students, we end up with a headcount, including staff of about 70 people. That's a lot of vehicles. I have three acres, but about an acre and a half-ish is where we can put cars. Okay? So that no trailers, no RVs, the end, no exceptions, infinity. No RVs, no trailers, no exceptions. Uh, next up, people often ask me about rides from the airport, et cetera. Again, my job, my one job, Fantastic experience inside my gates during the event. That's my job. I do that because I can deliver that and I can't control the other side. The Telegram group that you'll get access to after you make your deposit is a private group. You can't join it unless somebody gives you the link. And it is only for people who have been here or are coming here for a workshop. That is a promise I've made to those people. That way there's no nonsense in it. You have to be approved and let in. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Once you're in that group, there are tons of people that were like, I'm coming into DFW airport at about three o'clock on Wednesday. I'm willing to share an Uber or whatever. There's tons of that. There's tons of, well, I'm going to get an Airbnb. Does somebody want to tons of that? I just don't get involved. My job inside the gates, I make sure you have a fantastic time outside the gates. You're grown ass adults. You're on your own. I want to say something about Uber, Lyft, et cetera. Nobody has ever had a problem getting Uber or Lyft here from either of our airports. The two airports that you would want to check out are Dallas-Fort Worth and Dallas-Love Field. Dallas-Love, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth is definitely the better airport for you to use, unless you really save a ton of money. It is highly improbable that you could rent a car, drive from the airport, let that car sit here for three and a half days, drive back to the airport and leave, and not spend more money than even if you took an Uber or Lyft by yourself. If you split it with somebody, it's a done deal. You, I mean, there's no way you're coming ahead by renting a car. Or renting a car and splitting the cost with another student and riding with them and coordinating your times, things like that. All this puts less vehicles on my property and lets me do a better job for you guys. Because it gets out of hand. One of the reasons we cut the head count back, we sent a drone up at the last event, and we literally looked at it and said, if I had to put one more car on here, we'd have to go on the roof of the garage. So we, we, we can't. So anything that minimizes the number of vehicles is helpful. It's helpful to us. It's helpful to you. You do not need to go anywhere from the time you get here to the time you leave unless you're staying offside at a hotel or an Airbnb. You will not be hungry. You will be fed well. You will not need alcohol. We will have plenty and we will have beer runs. We will also have like flavored seltzers and some Cokes and stuff like that for those that don't want water, et cetera. People like, I need to go get snacks. It's it's a three and a half day event. You're a prepper. Bring your snacks that you think you need and you won't even use them. Okay. I, I'm, I'm telling you, we've been doing this now 10 years. We've gotten really good at it because we're, we're tight on the way that we manage things. That doesn't mean you can't leave. It just means you don't need to. So if you're thinking, I need a rental car because I'm going to need to go to the store or whatever, people leave, people pair up for that, people loan each other vehicles, there's going to be no shortage of cars here, don't think you need a rental vehicle, you really don't, and again, if you get in the group, you'll be able to find that there's a lot of people that you can share rides with, and that, that includes people who are renting a car because they're doing something else while they're here, but they're happy to give somebody a run from the airport or whatever if their times 
coalesce. All that shit about who comes in when and all, that's why I can't get involved. I got other things to do, guys. Uh, next up, um, again, best airport, DFW, hotels. We'll shop around if there's, you know, seven, eight, ten people that want a hotel room. Uh, we always get the best deal we can for you guys. Camping conditions. We have a three-acre property. About an acre is front yard, backyard. That's kind of the hub of activity, so nobody wants to camp there. So both sides, there's about an acre. And it's first come, first serve for sites. The property is almost completely flat, meaning that nobody has a hard time finding a place to put a tent. However, driving tent stakes is difficult, if not impossible, on most of the property due to the rock. The best tents for this are things like dome tents that just set up. Right? We've had people somehow get tent stakes on the ground. We've had a lot of people bend tent stakes, et cetera, as well. Uh, some guy set up a beautiful wall tent one year down. I don't know how he got the stakes to the ground, but he did it. But I would plan on your tent being something that doesn't require staking. Okay. It, and I would describe the camping conditions as primitive, except that you have facilities all around you, right? T the weather, it could be cold as crap. It could be beautiful. It could be hot. We just, it's November and it's North Central Texas. Generally, we do this time of year because it's usually beautiful weather. Usually, it will rain at least one night. TSP events cause rain, plan accordingly. But that's the camping conditions. We also have a good assortment of trees that work out for, for hammock campers. I would say there's about six to eight locations that are ideal for hammock camping. Uh, we never seem to have any, any more than that. There never seems to be any fighting over it or I didn't get a spot or anything like that. Um, but we do it first come, first serve. So that's just something to know. I also have a back shop building. It's about 800 square foot stainless steel building. We allow people to bunk up in there, throw a cot in there, things like that. That's also first come, first serve. I've had one particular problem child who wants to set up a giant freaking cabin tent inside the building. And I had to put the kibosh on that. There's no tents in there. It's open air type situation if you're in there. Some people like it. Some people don't. It's up to y'all. Uh, all this will be included in the, in the briefing when you get here and what have you. Um, but that's generally around six-ish people fit in there and are comfortable with each other. If you camp in there and you touch any electric switches or any cords that you are not supposed to, which will be told one you can use, the main light switch and one power strip for charging devices, if you touch anything else, you're in deep trouble with Nicole Sauce. I will let her handle it. We there, That building that I let you guys stay in, it runs a lot of my aquatic systems, and people like to play with cords to plug a phone into their own special outlet. Please touch nothing if you go in there. Um, showers. We have two shower tents, on-demand hot water, so if you're camping and you don't want to leave site, you can get clean. It's not the most glorious of all conditions basically they're on the one side of the building we have them hooked up to a propane tank you push a button and warm water comes out and i would say it's about a perfect warm shower temperature it's not hot it's not cold you you, you get cleaned off we you know you use your soap or whatever it runs into my swales it's good to go it's just that we usually put like some shelving and stuff outside because it's not exactly like six foot tall man stand up conditions it's a little bit and then you're worried about getting your clothes wet. So it's it's not perfect, but it seems to work for everybody. And with two shower tents and the breaks we have and all, it seems to work out really well. Um, so there are showers. Porta Johns, last year we had five. And we barely had, let's say, capacity. We had some capacity issues. This year we have six and we have at least 15 less people. So we should be good on that. Uh, you do not come into my personal residence unless I or Dorothy or a very limited number of staff members invite you in. We do this for a variety of reasons, but one is because we have dogs that like get a little bit antsy when there's this many people on their property and their, their safe space is inside the house. That's where we put them when they maybe they're a little amped up or they're a little bit worried. And they're also dogs that are taught to defend their property. So, to be blunt, you go in the house without one of us, it's possible you could get bit in the ass. It's actually happened. It was a minor little pinch bite. The person that it happened to wasn't hurt. Um, it was the dog you would think least likely to do it, but that's part of it. And part of it is this is a, we love doing this. We love doing this. We will always do this. We'll do this as long as we can as we get older, but it is a lot of stress on my family. And 
we don't need one more variable. So we have all these facilities for you guys, private residents, just stay out unless you're specifically invited in. Um, and then the last thing, again, I just want to reiterate, I know this might sound very regimented or whatever, but again, I'm back to, I have one real job. I have one real drop job in this, but it's a lot of things inside that job. Make sure your food is fantastic. Make sure your instructors are top notch. Make sure when I say an instructor is going to start presenting at 1115 at 1115, boom, we start presenting. Make sure that instructor is there. Make sure that instructor's AV is set up and ready to go. We'll be live streaming the event for free, by the way, to those that can't come to make sure that that's happening. All right. To every 15 to 20 minutes, be going somewhere to do something and have somebody say Jack and need to make a decision. Okay. And the way we got here, when I decided I wanted to do events, I went to like seven major events in the permaculture, homesteading, all, all the same space. And I went and I looked at everything that I didn't appreciate as a student. That I was like, I don't think that's the way to treat your students. I don't think students should have to bring fair trade coffee to have coffee in the morning. I think if somebody pays you money to come to your instructional event, you should provide freaking coffee. I don't think people should have to bring their own dishes right? Bring your own fork, knife, spoon, and plate and take it home with you. Like I, there were certain things like that that just rubbed me the wrong way. I went to permaculture events and they were so concerned with selling local food and couldn't afford to do it right that they were sell, they were feeding us for dinner broccoli and tofu. And I'm like, that shit's not happening. So fantastic meals. Here's an example. First day's meal. First day, we don't do a formal breakfast. We do breakfast bars and fruit and whatever, and, and you're on your own. But lunch, we're doing some amazing chicken that I make and sliders that are beyond freaking amazing that we've done. That's a mixture of pork and beef, full on keto. Instead of regular breadcrumbs, we use uh, pork rind crumbs. There's in, in the full batch, there was 10 pounds of bacon, jalapenos, onions. They're amazing. Uh, we're going to do a low carb tortilla fresh off the griddle with that. That's just lunch. Dinner that night, we're doing this amazing thing. It's basically a chicken and rice, but it's cauliflower rice. Don't care if you hate cauliflower. You'll love it. You'll never know it's cauliflower. It's with a garlic cream sauce. And I've put in hours and hours just to make enough of the garlic cream sauce for this. It's an involved process. That's just the first day. So I have this one job. One job. You enter, you enter a world where everything is fantastic. And to be able to do that with 70 human beings moving around, we have this structure in place. And that structure has been proven again over 10 years. And there were years, years we were crazy, but like in the beginning, we would do like four or five workshops in a year. So we probably have 20 plus workshops under our belt. And again, a return rate of 60 to 70%. And I, I'll tell you right now, if we said people who have been here, get an hour to sign up before anybody else, that number would be more like 80 to 90% at this point. And no new people would get a shot. That's why we don't do it that way. I used to give alumni like a five minute, 10 minute head start or something. We had to you know, kind of end that because we just wanted to make sure that new people had an opportunity to get it. So if anything I said today sounds like a little bit too harsh or whatever, it's not. There's no one that's ever come here and been like, you know what? Jack's a dick and his staff is a bunch of dicks and I want my money back. Anybody that felt that way, honestly, I would just give them their money back and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've been doing this again. over. It'll be our 10th year of doing this. Our 14th year of TSPC. More than 20 events. And we've had one person. So we've we put through over well over 1,000 people at this point. One person that was asked to leave, and this guy was a little bit creepy in the way he was. And it was another reason I don't do kids, right? Because this is another thing to worry about. It was, we used to let kids come. There were some other problems. But this guy was being creepy around kids. One in 10 plus years. And we've built this system. And here's the best news of all. Those of you that are new, I don't care how many people come back. It's not a click. You will be embraced by the community. You'll be one of us, one of us, one of us in no time at all. So I hopefully this was helpful, about 25 minutes long, longer than I planned. Um, but I hope it answers most of your questions because I'm getting a lot of questions. So I thought it'd be nice to have one place to uh, to post them all.